G'day internet, this is Doug from FCP Talent and your film. Now uh, today it's uh, it's Friday, I've got the Fridays and uh, I've been wanting to make a tutorial about this for a while. So I've got a friend and uh, she works at Disability Sports Australia, shout out Kayla. Um, and she has a lot to do with the, uh, the wheelchair rugby. Um, which this is an icon for now. She's gone and created this. She's not an animator. She's not an editor, uh, but she has figured out the, the keyframes work and uh, and uh, how to use animated mats and things like that. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but it inspired me because uh, as somebody who doesn't you know use keyframes or uh, or animate things, this was not a pleasant experience for her. Uh, and I wanted to uh, use this as a starting off point to talk about how animation can be handled very differently without keyframes in Final Cut 10. This might not go the way you think. I'm not going to take this out to motion. I'm not going to use behaviors or any of that. Um, I'm going to use titles. And there are a couple of companies out there who have taken what titles are in Final Cut 10 and been really creative with them and given us some wonderful options, which I use all the time. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about Motion VFX's M Behavior. So uh, in Final Cut 10, a title is a little bit beyond that, which is your traditional basic title, you know, like a word that goes on top of an image that you can then get in there and manipulate. Um, there is that, of course. Uh, and then uh, there's the other aspect of titles where uh, th the title itself can affect everything that's underneath, all the layers that are underneath. Um, and the best way to show you what I mean is to bring up a title. So there's a company called Lino Effects and uh, shout out to those guys too. Love your work. Uh, here's a, a basic uh, title that has some sort of an effect on the layers underneath. Whoops. Um, we can see the title comes up but also look in the background there. You see how that dimmed and it, if you look really closely you can see it's kind of hazed a little bit like it's got a, a layer of uh, blurriness over the top and then it animates out, goes away. Okay, so Motion VFX has taken this idea and gone, well, maybe we can use titles to animate. Maybe they don't have to be titles at all. Enter M Behavior and M Behavior 2. These can be purchased from Motion VFX. They do not come standard with Final Cut 10, but uh, they're one of the best purchases I ever made. Um, really, really easy way to uh, animate things um, with very little effort and fluidly. We're going to be doing... Uh, Compound clips, we're going to be putting compound clips inside of compound clips and you'll see that the fact is they uh, Final Cut doesn't, doesn't slow down at all. It's like playing with liquid mercury the entire time. It's good fun. So let's explain what these things do. Obviously we've got uh, a set of uh, ins. We've got, uh, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see we've got some outs and we've also got some uh, text and some through. And if we scrub over the top, we get a little preview of what's going to happen. Now some of these are okay, they're a little bit, you know, weird or a little bit naff um, and it all depends on your execution. It's how you use these tools uh, to animate. So uh, let's let's show uh, how they work. So we've got the preview on the window here. If I pick this preview up and I drag it in, uh, you can see that it affects the layer underneath. All right, so because this is um, an in animation, it's going from invisible to completely visible. It may be a little bit easier for me to demonstrate if I go back and grab uh, the entire finished logo and place uh, the arrange on top of that. There we go. All right, and we can quite easily swap that out with uh, something else by keeping that selected and then double clicking on something alternative. See, now we've just changed it over. Okay. Now, because we've got these layers and each, uh, each layer is the same size and they're on a transparent background, well, we can animate them on separately. All right? However, if we take, say, this for example, no, let's use the same one so we, uh, we're familiar with what we're looking at. Um, if we take this and place it on top, it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect uh, from this layer, this layer, this layer, this. It's going to affect everything. Let's just watch that. Okay, so we don't want that. We want to animate these in separately. So what I'm going to do is use a compound clip. Select the two that I want to compound clip. That's the title as well as the element. And now I'm going to hold down option. And I'm going to press G. That's going to create a compound clip. It doesn't matter what I call it. So I'm just going to press enter and we'll watch that element animate in independent of the rest of them. Okay. 
Now we do have to be a little bit careful here because uh, depending on which animation we choose, it's possible that uh, these elements could go off the screen, which could affect us later. So it's going to be uh, helpful for us at this point just to take this and scale it down. I want to scale it down to 70%. That should do. So now all of these elements are smaller. They're still aligned, but they're smaller. Okay, I'm going to put that back inside a compound clip. I want all these elements to ele uh, animate on individually, so I'm going to create compound clips for each one of these layers. Now let's go and grab that, that effect, step back out of the compound clip, and I'm going to step into each one of these in turn and use the same M behavior to animate them in. And we're done. It's going to look like they're all animating together. So let's separate them out a little bit. Shift, and then the period, the full stop, uh, which is next to the question mark, will shuffle things across 10 frames. Let's move that 10 frames. Let's move this 20. Let's move this 30. Let's move this one 40. Is that it? And that's it. So now they're all moving in exactly the same way, but because they're separated out a little bit, We get that groovy effect. Okay, um, that that's all well and good, but that little basketball one, no, where is he? It's right in the middle there. I'm gonna animate that separately. So let's select that, move that back 10 frames, move this back 20 frames, and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to put, oh, actually, you know what? That one can go there, so they're all uh, still staggered out evenly. And I'm gonna treat this one a little bit differently. So the basket, well, basketball, the football is going to, uh, Actually, I don't even know. What do you call that, Kayla? What do you call a, a ball in wheelchair rugby? All right, that's another question for another time. Uh, anyway, I'm going to step in there. I'm going to animate the ball a little bit differently. Why don't we have it um, popping up out of the ground uh, as if it's being kicked in or something like that? Let's have a look. What do we got? Um, we've got two sets of M behavior and M behavior two. Drop in. What's Ah, uh, that looks pretty cool. Maybe. I think there's something in here that's a little... Let me rush in, that could do it. What would that do? It's going to do that, huh? Okay. Still not quite what I want. Surface in. That's pretty fun. Let's use that one. Pick it up, drag it in, and of course I'm going to uh, delete the one I previously selected. Let's just see how this animates. Ha! Cool. All right, now let's have a look at it in situ. Isn't that great? Now, there's nothing stopping us, of course, compounding, clipping these compound clips. Does that make sense here? Yeah. Why would I want to do that? So that we can animate them all out together. Uh, what's a nice animate out? Let's have a look. Drop out. Yeah, why not? Let's try that one. So I'm just going to line that with the end of the clip. I'm going to move this forward a little bit just because we want to make sure it's animated in completely before it animates out. So we're going to give it a bit more time and a little bit more still. <laughs> All right, that's fun. Let's uh, compound clip those again. Why not? Why would I want to do that? Well, because there's plenty of other things we can now do. Let's say we wanted to use it as a bug in the corner of the screen. Nothing stopping us doing that. That's the uh, transform tools. Let's make that a little smaller. Let's pick it up, put it in the side there. Awesome. All right, I hope that uh, demonstrates the power and the flexibility of uh, M behavior and just really titles in uh, Final Cut 10. If you've got any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Uh, and of course, we do requests. If you're curious about something, ask us and hopefully we can show you as easily as we just showed you that. Take care. Ciao for now.